please welcome Dr. Finlay Sutton. Thank you very much. So I'm talking about complete dentures today, and if you want to get a full download of every slide I'm showing, just go to my resources section, it's just here, you click on that as a PDF. In addition, which is really useful as well, there's a full complete denture construction manual in there too, and that has every step that I use for making dentures, so you can just download that too. So, I want to share with you Estelle today, her story. So, Estelle lives about two and a half hours away from the practice up near Newcastle. So, what I do often with patients is a Zoom consultation before I actually see them. So, a dentist will refer the patient, I'll get some records and maybe some x-rays, and then I can have a conversation. So, Estelle's history is she's had two rounds of all on X all on four, all on six. So two rounds, top and bottom, and they've both failed. And she's not happy at all. She's really upset. Um, but on the Zoom call, she can take her teeth out and show them to me. Um, and I can also use those records that I have. Uh, this is a denture that she's wearing at the top at the moment. And I can just immediately look at it and think, yes, we can improve on the aesthetics on that denture. So, and also, I can just have a good conversation with the patient. So, she's going to tell me about what she's done her research on. She's looked at zygomatic implants. She doesn't want that, but she doesn't want dentures either. So, she's going to talk now about this. Nothing fits. Um, and, um, sorry. Okay. I get really upset about it all. Um, and that's it, basically. And I just uh, wondered if you could help me. So, um, I, I, I don't, I, I, I know about um, the zygomatic um, sort of uh, treatment that you can have, which involves an operation and methylene in your mouth and all this sort of thing. And I, because of what I've been through, to be honest, <laughs> I don't want dentures, but I don't want to go through an operation like that either. So she wants a magic wand, and I don't have one of those. Um, no, she's emotionally damaged, isn't she? This, it's almost like they've been through post-traumatic post stress, and it's really affecting them. So this is a common sort of issue that I have when I'm seeing my patients. And often these patients take longer to treat just because they need more surgery time. And consequently, it's more expensive. Um, what I do at this point is I can share my screen on Zoom and go straight to case studies and then pick out a case that is similar to them. So in this case, Linda here, she had failed all on fours. And I can just share with them the, the screen. So, so this is Estelle and this is Lynn, both looking at the screen at what potentially I can do for them. So I can just talk them through, you know, Linda, this is Linda, she's got a full upper denture. She's had round one of all on four, which has failed, round two of all on four, which has failed. And now she's got an absolutely bombed out maxilla, which is really hard to manage. So, and what we did for her was, um, I made her a complete upper denture and a lower partial just to balance the bite, and it actually worked really well. She does need a bit of fixative, though. Um, and so this is a before and after. And I can also say, look, we can use photos of your natural teeth, so, and we can mimic that as well. And it was, we really love doing that. And it actually worked really well for, for this patient. So... So I can give the patient an idea on potential costs as well, just a range, say, look, you know, the dentures could range between 15 and 25,000. It really depends on what I have to do with those implants. Are you okay with that? And if the patient says yes, okay, well, let's get you in for a consultation and I'll give you an accurate quote for that. So. So Estelle chose to come ahead and, and come into the practice. So here she is at presentation. 
So this is her mouth here. So she's got a full upper denture, and then underneath that, that's a screw-retained bridge, ceramic bridge with lots of plaque on those three implants there, looking a bit of a mess. The upper denture is not clipping into the implants at the top, and she's using glue to hold that in place. So, and then, so this is a mouth when I take the denture out. She's got this sort of remnants of the implants up here. These are Branner marks, and she's got Southern Dental Industries um, implants at the bottom there, Southern Dental Implants, a South African firm. So let's have a look at a bite now, and what happens to that. Look at that Just little together. thing there, and it moves, yeah. doesn't it? That's fine. So those implants have failed. So, and then this is the lower. Now, I was like, I'm always like so pleased when the screw retained, you know, because I can get to it. If it's cemented on, it's a right nightmare because I've got to drill the thing off. So, so that's, that's one thing. This is an x-ray picture of those lower implants. So the two either side, 40% of bone remaining. The one in the middle is in mush. So, but I don't really know what these side implants are like either. So I don't take it off at the consultation because it might all go completely wrong and then she can't get to Newcastle, you know, without, she'll have no teeth. So this is my plan, was to take out any of the remaining implants that have failed and then provide her with complete dentures and use the implants that we can. So I have a really frank discussion with the patient. This is at the consultation phase here. So I've made my diagnosis. I can then talk about the treatment plan. Now with, with Estelle, I said to her, look, me and Rowan can make some great dentures for you that will fit really well, but I think that's 30% of the battle. I think 70% of the success will be down to you adapting to these new dentures. So, and then also what I do show them here, this is just on the screen there is a video of someone eating with complete dentures in an x-ray video showing neuromuscular control in action. I'll show you that right at the end of the talk because it's amazing and really, really good education for the patients. So... And then she goes away and I do a letter and that gets sent electronically through to the patient. So, and it has all of the diagnosis, treatment plan and everything that the patient needs to be aware of there. And in a lot of these cases, I think are gonna be a bit tricky. I offer a phone call with a patient that I previously treated with sort of similar problems. So Lynn spoke to Estelle and talked her through it. Now, Lynn was my most difficult denture patient I've ever treated. So, and I had to make her five sets of dentures to get her right. So, and so we went through the valley of the shadow of despair, getting from A to B. So, so what Lynn does, she's brilliant now. She'll tell the patient, look, don't give up on Finn. They'll continue trying their best until they can get it as good as possible. So, so she chose to come in and see me. So this is visit one now. So we've got Estelle in the chair. I've numbed her up. And so local in there. And it's really hard to take out those implants. There you are. Oh, wow. Wow. So uh, that's that out. So I put a bit of the hard reline in there. So I'm, I'm still not sure what's going on with those implants. I don't want to take it off. So I'm going to do an impression for an immediate denture and then have an immediate made for next visit. So if I do take the bridge off and it all goes wrong, I've got something to fall back on. So let's do the impression. So what I use is a stock tray. And I put my red cake compound in for the saddle areas like that, just on the back. And then Claire and I mix two different alginates together. So this is in the surgery here. And because I'm the boss, I have a, a machine that spins round and Claire does it <laughs> manually. So Claire, Claire loads this syringe up here 
and I load the tray. I like to load my own trays, actually, because I know where I want the impression material to go. I can build it up properly. So I load that up. I can ask the patient, please, can you have a swallow now? Just make your mouth as dry as you can. And I load the tray. And then what I do when I'm loading it, I'm thinking about where it needs to go in the mouth. And then I'm going to glaze it under some water. I've got running water. And I shape up the alginate. You'll just see me do it just in a sec now. Claire's trying to load that syringe with minimal air bubbles. She pops it on the side. And I'm glazing that impression there, smoothing it, just before it goes in the mouth. This is really cold water, Garstang temperature. So it extends the setting time. And then I, I just kneel down in front of the patient and do my injection there of it. So here we are with Estelle. So this is from my head cam. So I wanted to totally relax the mouth. I don't talk about tongue, really, because that goes massive if I do. And then squirting it round the lingual section, just there, all the way round. I want to get into the retromyelar hyoid area, just gently squirt it in and get two fingers on it. And then round, round into the sulcus, because I want the sulcus. This is for an immediate denture. So I'm going to do some border moulding for her as well. So I rotate the over-impression in. Lift up your tongue and relax. Down. Push it down at the back. So it's fully down. And then I'm going to do some moulding now. So this is me talking to Estelle. Really good. Sorry about this. It's very strange, isn't it, doing this? And then, please, could you um, just lick I, your upper lip? I wanted to get her tongue out, but she doesn't do it side very side, well. Almost like a windscreen wiper. Come on, Lovely. Estelle, get it. Good stuff. And then, could you just try and get your tongue and stick it out towards me, right out, as far as you can, and then side to side. Lovely. There, she's works. done it. That's good. So. So I get a nice impression, and I'm going to be able to make a nice immediate denture. I do the same at the top, and I can make a special tray on that. So I also make a copy of the upper current denture and take a bite in Futar D, bite registration material. I love Futar D. It's so solid. It's really good. Um, we then mount the cast. So Ron's got it here, and then he cuts off the lower bridge from there like that, but he leaves bumps where the implants are, because I don't know what's going to happen when I take them out. And then he makes an immediate denture to that. So I've got the immediate denture made, so I can now sort of relax when she comes in for her next visit, I can take the bridge off. So visit two, take the bridge off. So those, the central implants fail, the two either side are still integrated, they're still solid. So that's the bridge when I'd taken it out. I had to use a little bit of local anaesthetic there because it was sore, so just numbed it up. And then I fill in that hole, take out the implant, fill in that central hole, screw hole, and then I can just pop it back in, and then she's sorted. So, and then at visit two, I'm going to do an upper impression, but look at that maxilla, isn't that flat? You know, it's not as extreme as Linda's, but it's really super flat. And I want to get a really good impression of that. And I love using a special tray with green stick compound and do all my border moulding there. And then I then put some adhesive on, some very runny alginate blueprint like this. And then I take this to the mouth. So this is me. This is all the movements that I do. I want to border mould the periphery. So relax your lips. I'm pulling the cheeks. Not too hard, just quite gently, pulling the cheeks, so I'm moulding the periphery all the way round, and just making it nice and narrow under the base of the nose. Waggle the jaw for the coronoid process. And open really wide. And then wide. And then can and then you suck my finger? Powerful suck. As hard as you Embarrassing. Can. Relax. relax. So there. 
So, and it produces a lovely impression. And then we've got this periphery here. It's because I'm wanting to maximize the suction I'm going to get on that denture. So this is Estelle's impression. And you probably look at the front there, Finley. You push through the tray there, that's really bad. She actually does have a little bit of flabbiness there. So I've got to remember that when I come to fit it. So just hold that thought. So she's all back together and I've not bothered using my immediate denture because I don't need to, I can put the bridge back in. So the immediate denture is just in the box. So visit three, I've ordered locator attachments that fit into these as low as possible, you know, tiny ones there. So I've screwed those on and then I put my pickup hats on there and I'm going to do my working impression. So for complete dentures, I use the Dr. Arbe special tray design. So, and, um, and it's all in my denture construction manual, the steps for doing that. It's, it's really quite straightforward with different landmarks. So if you want to find that, you can just see that there. So Rowan makes the custom tray to the outside of that line. If I'm doing implants, an implant supported lower denture, it's exactly the same. Because I want maximum support from the saddles. Plus, Estelle might lose one of these implants. So she might lose both. And we can still use that denture in the future. So I bored and mold this using five steps. I'll show you that just in a minute. This is using green stick again. And I like using Imprigum for my impression pickups for, for uh, implant work. So what I've done here is I've just squirted some Imprigum around those impression pickups first. And then I'm going to rotate this tray in. I'm going to just position it now like that. She lifts so the tongue up. Lovely and relax. Brilliant. And then it goes under Pop and down. There. Lovely. So five movements. That's good. Right, e please, could you close first. up now? E and then e e e e so these are the R Bay movements. And then for the inside. Lick your lip, really go for Windscreen it. wiper. Lovely. Lick push the lip. against the strut. Push against Firm the strut. With your tongue. Lovely and relax. And, and then, then squirt water powerful in. Swallow. You powerful can close swallow. Right up. Swallow. So all of that periphery is beautifully moulded. So, and this is the impression that I've got there. So, just like a complete denture impression, really nice shape to it. So, visit four is registration. So, this is a fun visit. So, what I do is I ask the patient to bring in a photograph of the natural teeth. And Estelle said, I hate my teeth. I hated them. I don't want my teeth to look like that. So, but I can still use it for calculating the size of the upper centrals. And then we can do orthodontics on the denture. So, and if you want to find the formula for calculating this, again, it's just in my construction manual there. And I use it all the time, it's really good. So, what I want to know is, what do you want to look like, Estelle? What would you like your teeth to look like? And this is it, here. If my clicker works. There we are. <laughs> Julia Roberts, great. So, no, seriously, though, it's great having something to aim for. It's just really good. That's what we need. So, but the, now, the main difference between Estelle and Julia Roberts is her upper lip is like four times as long as Julia Roberts. She's got a really short upper lip as Julia Roberts. So, if we position the teeth in just the same place as Julia Roberts, her teeth are just going to be way down here. It's just going to look silly. So, she was happy and said, it's fine if you lift them, and I don't show as much gum, but I just want the arrangement of Julia Roberts' teeth, please. So that's fine. So my job is to carve the wax rims to give her that same shape. And I use a full upper rim, and I use a pivot at the bottom. We call it a Manchester rim. It's just like a full rim, just with the front bit cut out. So that's for my tooth prescription and for my occlusal vertical dimension. So this is it in the mouth here like that. So I trim that up. But I want to just show you what me and Claire are doing at this visit. So I carve the outside of the rim with a wax knife. It's a really, and then I use another super expensive piece of equipment, a 
for carving the incisal plane and occlusal plane, heated in a Bunsen burner, wallpaper scraper. So here we are, this is the surgery, and this is what we do. And I'm carving the rim, doing these six steps here. So lip support, all of these there. So here we go. So we have a good look at the patient. And it will, you know, I want to see what she looks like with that rim in place, with reference to Julia Roberts' photo over here. So I'm putting a fox's bike plane in the mouth, just there. And Claire has a look at the patient, and she'll say, yeah, that looks good, or it's maybe a bit down on one side. You know, she's worked with me for years, so she knows what looks good. And then I double check it. Claire actually said it looks bob on there, and it did. It looked really good. So, and then I want a smile. Give us a smile, please, Estelle, because I want to see what it's showing. So that's the incisal plane I've looked at. I'm now going to pick up a ruler to just check it. The occlusal plane is parallel to the fox's plane. So that's number three, like that. So, so that's how we do it. And we're just, it's all about looking at the patient from lots of different angles, coming round here and also coming round the back, looking down the top here. So we can just see how the whole face looks. It's about movement. So, and then the other thing, after I've done that, I look at the buccal corridors and then the center line. And then trim that lower rim to get the right vertical dimension. And I use the reference, if the patient looks right at that vertical, they are right. That's my premise. So, and this is so important, these two pictures, to give Rowan that. So he's got them on his iPad on the bench. He's got Julia Roberts' smile and the carved rims, and then he can align the teeth onto that. So it's really good. So the other part of the registration visit is is finding centric relation. And I find finding centric relation accurately is ultra important for these patients that have got really flat ridges because the destabilizing forces from the occlusion can really make the whole thing tip. So I want to record CR accurately. And this is brilliant for doing that. So it's a plate that fits onto the working casts and it's really accurate. So it's a bit like the fitting of the denture. And then we've got the, a plate at the top and a stylus on the bottom there. And then that goes into the patient's mouth. But before I do that, I put a black china graph mark on here. So when that stylus sits there, it's going to scrape it off. So let's take this to the mouth. This is my head cam view. And I'm going to get... Estelle to move forward and back and side to side. So what should do that Lovely. here? So she's really going really for it. Good. Forward and back, awesome. side to side. Awesome. Go Lovely. anywhere. That's brilliant. Now, just go forwards and back. There, forwards and back. So that back position is centric relation. So when I take it out, it's got this... V shapes like an arrow pointing directly at centric relation. So I now need to just fix that together in the mouth. And how I do that is I put a plastic disc over that with a hole in it, right over the tip of the triangle. So I just fit it with wax around the edge, drip it on, goes into the mouth, make sure I get that pin into the hole, and then hold that together, and whilst it's there, just squirt Futar D into that, and it all locks in really nicely, and then that just comes out of the mouth. So, so this is what, at the end of my registration stage, goes to Rowan. So he has, he's got at the top here, the carved rims for the tooth prescription. He's got a face bow that fits onto this upper carved rim, and he's also got the Gothic arch there, so he can then use that to mount the models and essentially have Estelle's head on the bench in the lab in front of Rowan, like that, so it's all mounted up nicely. And then Rowan will then set the teeth up then into wax for a try-in. So this is it, visit five, Rowan's arranged the teeth according to Julia Roberts, really carefully looking at the photos. So this is the try-in here. So we do that, 
and then photograph, and then we do a video of the patient with the trying in. And the patient looks at this video with the sound turned off because they're talking at the same time. Sometimes the, the sound of their voice puts them off. I just want them to look at how they're going to look with the teeth in, in their social setting, social environment like that. So we do this video, and then Claire pops it onto the screen there, and she gets Lynn through and Estelle, and they, both, they all look at it and make a judgment and say, they don't like it. Don't like it. So, because, number one, she wants more lip support. Number two, she wanted the midline, just further that way, there. And also, she wanted the right to look more like the left. So, they, they preferred this view here compared to that. So, which sounds really awful and like difficult, but it isn't. You know, Rowan's just really experienced at doing this, so he just changes it. So we went ahead and did a try in two. So reset the teeth according to all those little parameters. And they didn't like it again. She wanted more lip support. So again, Rowan just resets the teeth, brings them further forward, and then We've got, so this is trying two, just there, and then that's trying three, just here. So, and she liked it, which is great. You know, she was really happy with that, trying three. But if you look really carefully at those teeth now, they are actually really similar to Julia Roberts' setup. Um, and Rowan's just really good at doing this, just using the photos and just aligning the teeth, you know, just a little gap, tiny gap there, here, and all of this sort of, arrangement, so it's good. So then Rowan finishes the dentures. So now because we're doing the, the lower ones are going to be implant supported, we metal reinforce that because they're often prone to breaking. The upper one, I would like to metal reinforce it, but because the maxilla is so flat, I want maximum suction, and I find that reinforcing it with metal, the suction is never quite so good on them. So we've gone for an acrylic-based upper. So, so that's the denture finished. And, um, you know, Rowan's done a lovely job on it, but they just look like sort of 20-year-old's teeth, don't they? You know, they just look really young. But that's what she wanted. You know, it's fine. And, I, you know, aesthetics is just down to what the patient wants. I'm quite totally happy with that. So I'm going to fit the dentures now. So this is what I do at the fit stage. So she's coming for the fit. What I want to do, it's so important, Estelle walks out of the door without them hurting. So the, what I do is I... This is the lower denture, it's in the mouth. I squeeze it down on the premolars with my thumbs on underneath the chin firmly and then say, where does that hurt? You know, does it hurt anyone? I look into her eyes if they're squinting a little bit. So, and it's hurting. So often with lowers, what I find is that the lingual shelf is sore, can be quite sore. It's not great for supporting the denture. So I squirt onto the fitting surface, because that was sore for her when I squeezed it. Just on the fitting surface, I squirt this light-bodied silicone impression material, which is like for crown and bridge work. This is like a fit check. So that goes on all of that fitting surface on that lingual section. I take that to the mouth. I'll just show you the video now of me doing that. I'm talking to her about something totally randomly, so just ignore what I'm saying. The removable denture stuff for them. Just putting that in. And it's lots of young dentists on it. I'm doing a course maybe just next week. Just talk. But what I wanted to do is close together, close up, and me just squeeze it down with my fingers. Um, and then what happens is it pushes through on the parts that are touching. And if it hurts in that area, so where it pushes through, it forms a, you can actually see where it's touching the uh, ridge there. And what I do is just mark it up with a Sharpie like that, and then peel it off, because I've not used adhesive, just peel off that silicone, and then I can then adjust it. 
and it's just like, just grind the dots off. It's really good. Um, and then I just keep repeating that until it's totally comfortable. But I actually, once I've done that, I polish it up with a little, this is a polishing rubber, just to finish the whole thing. Take it back to the mouth, and it's so important that when I squeeze it down, it doesn't hurt. Like, that's really super important. So, now let's look at the upper now. So, can you remember when I, sorry, just before I do that, I'll talk about fitting the locators. So, um, so I'm going to put locators attachments in, and what I like to use are the weakest locator attachment. I don't like to ramp it right up to the most grippy, I want the weakest possible. And because these implants are not really parallel, they're a bit like that, I chose to use the locator attachment without this male insert, so this bit here without that insert, because they work better with implants that are not angled. And the other thing, there's no way am I going to cold cure the housings in when I've got all this thread exposed here. You know, so Rowan does it. It's so important that, you know, in these cases. So, anyway, let's go to the upper. So, can you remember with my impression, I've poked through here to the, and I've squidged that incisal papilla, and that could be an issue with retention on that upper denture. It could want to pop it out. So I check it with my silicone here, and then put my Sharpie pen on there, peel it off, grind it back. So I relieve that front section there so it's sitting better, just like I would do for the lower. So that's her, she's good to go now. Bite feels really good, off she goes. So, that, and that's the dentures fitted there for her. So, I get her back one week later. And so, if you're adjusting a denture next week, this little tip might help you with that. So, if, if the denture rubs and causes a little, you know, red patch or even like an ulcer there, this is how I handle it. So, I dry it off with my gauze, and then I put some pressure indicator paste onto the ulcer, and then I get the denture, I make sure I seat it back in properly, like that, push it back down, and then I take the denture out, and that dot, that white dot, I just get my, and drill it out. So it's a really precise way of adjusting. I love that technique. So, now this whole journey, you know, she's had like three try-ins, it's taken quite a few months, but she was totally delighted with this denture, and I was too. I was really worried about suction on this upper because of the flat upper ridge, but the saving grace was a really long upper lip that drapes right down around the denture to help with suction. You know, patients have got a short upper lip with high phenol attachments. I've got issues with seal breaking, but with her, it just was great. So she's just going to talk now. She's just talking about booking a meal at a restaurant, but just watch how everything just fits into place really nicely. And I saw her for two reviews, and then that's it. And she's been absolutely fine. It was, like, remarkable, really. I was quite lucky. And I thought, I haven't booked anything there, and what's going on? So um, I, I said to Lynn, I'll have to contact them, I don't know what's going on. Oh, she said, no, it's all right, though. She said, I booked it for you to take me there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, so, so she's a happy person now. It's really it was totally amazing. So, so what she, she wrote to us as well, sent us these letters. Her, her writing's really quite nice, but you, it's difficult to read. So I'll just pick out the bit that I think is quite in, useful. Thanks for everything you've done to me. Hated the thought of dentures, but it works. You and your wonderful team have made me feel like a human being again. There I say it, a new woman, here I come, which is great. But she doesn't forget, which is really important, Claire... She sent Claire a separate card just to say thank you for looking after me so well and making me laugh when I got into states about my teeth all the time. Because like every visit she came in, she had a bit of a, almost like a cry and then got over it and then we were able to get on with the treatment. You know, she was like properly. And then she sent a, a, 
a card to Rowan as well. Thanks a bunch. Uh, know you like the finer things in life, especially food. You are a genius. Uh, thank you. And he is. He's just tremendous, is Rowan. So, now you know what, though? I much prefer doing dentures like this. Copying natural teeth. It's so much more exciting. So this is Valina, and look at her natural teeth there. And then we did a diastema and just absolutely went to town on it. It's just wonderful. And it's really exciting doing that. She came in with this denture, like that. And it's not a bad one. They've had a good go, but it's just not, the teeth are just not in the right place and not really the right size. So, um, you know, it's an absolute joy doing this. And interestingly, let's go back to the side views. If my clicker, there it is, it's worked. Good. The, uh, that's her old denture just there. And can you see the, the teeth are set right over the ridge, right over the ridge too far down. And I've, I've actually brought these upper teeth further out and up, almost around the ridge, and it just it puts them back where they were naturally. So, and that's often, if I look at before and afters, that's what I see with my dentures generally, and then they look really good. So, so these are the teeth, and we do like to use different colours as well, darker canines particularly, make them look really natural. So, and then what I do, once I've fitted the dentures, at the fit appointments, I always show them this video that Frau Kamula shared with me years ago, and it's amazing, it's really good. It shows a, a man eating with these dentures, and they've been in his mouth for 30 years. I think this is the most important bit of the whole talk today, is neuromuscular control, massively important. So just watch how the dentures move up and down and shift whilst he's eating. So he's going to bite some food now. And just look at the lower shifting on its base. That upper's starting to tip. He's controlling those dentures himself, you know, neuromuscular control in action. Eating away, bouncing around. You know, when it comes to swallow, they don't half move. All over the place. But he's got control of them, it's amazing. So I show them this video, and, and also I say, look, you know, if you're going to have this in the drawer, just a, a pretend toy hand, you know, if I had a new hand, it would work differently. If I had a false leg fitted, I'm not going to be able to walk very well with it to start off with. It takes time to get used to it. So, so Valina, your, your job is to, is to learn how to use it, and also... Think of it, it's not like natural teeth. I want you to be a chopper, not a grinder. Like a crocodile, not a sheep with eating. You know, that'll just... So, so I give them all those instructions like that. And um, so this is Valina. She comes back, you know, for a first review, and she says, I've been doing what you told me, but don't tell my husband, you know that I've been listening to you. Yeah? This is her here, going to say that. Oh, that's great. Well, I've got to deliver that, so I've got to do as I've been told as well. I mean, not my husband. Would I? Don't tell him. <laughs> so, you know, she got on beautifully with those, so. Anyway, so, what I'm just, I'd love it, you know, if, if you're doing dentures and the patient wants to have their teeth look like their natural teeth, just be brave with the tooth positions. You know, get your technician to really push it because it looks really good. And also, I'd love it if you'd just use the resources from the website and, you know, just put them into action and see if they work. You know, there's tons of material on there. And also, um, please, it'd be great if you could visit Ultimate Dental Supplies too because they've got all of those Shotlander teeth that I use for my patients, and Shotlander have kindly supported me to come over here too. So it's, I've absolutely loved coming back to Australia. It's been brilliant. Um, thank you very, very much indeed.
So we've got about five minutes for questions. So if any of you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them or help to answer them. So if you just pop your hand up, there's a microphone down here. I'll just stay here. Um, do you normally not put sevens on your yeah. complete dentures? Yeah, normally no sevens. Um, just because the seven is on the ascending part of the ramus. So if a patient chews on that seven, it can set a destabilizing force forward. So that's number one. Number two, um, they can get in the way of that suction denture thing where you've got the tongue and the cheek touching at the back of the denture too. And also in addition to that, I think reducing surface area of teeth helps people to masticate through the food better too. Hi, good day. How do you overcome retention problems with the wax rooms during trying and bite reg? That's a really good question. Um, if when I do the, tr when I put the reg rim in, if it's dropping down, I cut the post dam at that visit. So on the working cast, I score out the post dam and feed the wax into the back edge of it and then pop it back in. Now, for Estelle, I actually used a hard base, like a plastic base for her, just because I was worried about retention. So when I'd done my working impression, I, and Rowan had poured the cast, I scored the model out, and then Rowan made a plastic base on that to help retention. But I don't like using it very often, because it can get in the way of the occlusal plane and carving that. But carving the post is really important. And then, if it's still dropping down, a bit of fix. Yeah. Oh, thank you for a fabulous lecture. Whereabouts just, are you? Just over here. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hi. <laughs> um, prior to starting treatment, how do you know if a patient has enough neuromuscular control to manage with a full denture? For example, if the patient has Parkinson's or early dementia, like what are you assessing? Um, it's really difficult to quantify how well, good the de how they're going to adapt, so it's a discussion. Now, with these patients with dementia, the quality of the prosthesis needs to be really good, you know, so it has to be beautifully made and fitted to help. And then the other thing that can help with these cases is that because their cognitive learning capabilities are not that good, often the lower is their bite can be really weird. So I put a soft lining in moloplast on the base. Rowan does that as part of that thing. And so it helps to reduce it being sore. Um, so uh, in turn, but I think it's really just, if it's so important if they've got a really supportive family behind them too. So if they've got a carer or you know, husband or wife that's looking after them, if they're part of that discussion, they can help with this learning of the whole thing. So, and actually, to be totally frank with you, I've not failed to help anybody with that using these techniques. The techniques are always the same. Big ridges, small ridges, neuromuscular control, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just all the same. That's a good question. So, oh, there's a hand up just here. It, there's one minute 20 to go. <laughs> sorry, one more, sorry. Uh, if you're um, creating an upper immediate denture, yeah. uh, where you're removing the last few teeth, which are not too good, and if there's a vastly different bite that the patient's been used to with the previous natural teeth yeah. to the where you're trying to put them with the new denture. How do you manage that transition? So generally my immediate dentures I make in uh, intercuspal position or as close as possible to their existing bite. Um, and then, but my immediate dentures are always temporaries. And then I then move on the blank canvas and then do record them in CR. So yeah, it's good. Right. 
Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you.